Hello and welcome back. We are now into round four of the fourth and final Legend of the Stars qualifying tournament. We just saw Blackheart drop out of the top bracket to a very, a very nicely executed snipe there from Nexus of Reality. We're now going to go through to follow our winners. We have got Patrick versus Blodier. This is going to go down on Blood Throne. We're going to see, well, hopefully a little bit more action. The last Blodier game was a little bit slow with a huge number of, well, economy buildings and galactic colossi and things. So if you're listening, Blodier, make this one a fast and action-packed game. That is what we want to see. All right, let's head over to Blood Throne and see if we're going to get that. All right, we are here on Blood Throne, and the astute amongst you may have noticed that that little map intro was flooded Blood Throne. So apologies for that. I was actually the only Blood Throne image I had available in the five minutes before this tournament. In any case, we're not on the flooded Blood Throne. We're on the regular Blood Throne, and we are going to watch Patrick. He is going to go Aeon, and he's going to take on Blood Deer. So we have got a first land factory going down. In fact, making use of the double adjacency available for the starting position he is going to throw down that first land factory let me just fix that mini map there we go he's going to get that first land factory he's going to grab his well it looks like four core mixes after one power generator two power generators by the looks of it okay down in the south his opponent Blodier is going to get double adjacency on his first land factory as well. He's going to throw down two power generators, get one, two, three mixes. He's actually going to get that fourth mix with his first engineer, which is going to slow down his expansion maybe just a little bit. But that engineer is going to proceed to come out and grab that hydro. Your Hydro is already underway though for Petrick, so just being a little bit faster out of the gate because he didn't stop to build that extra mix. That means Bloodier just a little bit more ahead in the mass game, but that's going to give Petrick a slight advantage in power. Now if you look at the scoreboard, you will see that the names don't actually match up. We have got Bloodier as expected, but for some reason Petrick is currently known as Tohu Master Race. Uh, Tao Hu, Tau Ho, I, I, I don't know. Tu Ho, I got me, but we're gonna we're gonna call him Petrick because we know how to say that. Okay, so Petrick getting his fourth power generator underway, then he's after a fifth, and then he'll be throwing down that second factory. Blodier is down here, he's come out to assist the AC, or the ACU has come out to assist the Hydro and then the Air Factory. He's going to get adjacency on that Air Factory, so that's going to be a little bit of a bonus there. He's not going to quite need so much power. And in fact, with all of that extra assistance, Blodier was a little bit faster to get that Hydro finished. The Hydro just coming up, ready to go now there for Petrick. Blodier is shifting his ACU off. Once he's got that completed, he's going to come across and grab this extra expansion. So that's going to be a little bit more mass. Petrick very slowly actually going for that. He's got this one engineer. He's going to come out, going to grab two mixes before hitting that. In fact, he's going to grab one of those four mixes and then come across and randomly build this extra hydro. So it looks like Petrick is maybe just a little bit short on engineering capability just at the moment and maybe if he you grab one of these engineers and use them to expand he might be a little bit better off meanwhile blood air has actually got an engineer all the way out to here already so the scoreboard is tied neck and neck it's 13 all it does feel like blood air is going to pretty quickly escalate his mass income because he's getting just a few more engineers out across a little bit faster these expansions here from Petrick. well he's finally moving his acu across to secure that extra expansion so he is just a little bit behind Lodier is now six mass protect or three mass extractors that translates to in the lead All right the first little bit of combat is coming in here and Petrick has opted for a flare so that is a light assault bot that is not going to do particularly well against an aurora especially given that Lodier has the radar coverage from this spirit back here so that aurora is going to handily deal with that the engineer is going to well actually i don't think the it was an engineer lost at all the engineer just backed up because of the threat from that 
assault. All right, we've got a little scout coming down at this side of the map as well. So Petra just trying to get a little bit of eyes on what Bladir is doing. Maybe just trying to spot if there is any building this far out at this point, which there is not, of course. And the ACU, actually, I wonder if the ACU is going to head across and take that expansion. I'm not really familiar with the meta. Does this game get played, does this map get played enough in one versus one to establish a meta? I couldn't even tell you. But Bloodier looks like he's definitely trending towards the left side of the map a little bit more with his ACU leaving the engineers and fighting units to secure the center and his right. Actually, he's not moving at all right now. He has pulled up his couch once again and decided to sit still. In fact, it would be a pretty cool little mod if the ACU, when he was doing nothing because you forgot about him, if he built himself a couch and sat down. There you go, modders. There's a job for you. Okay, in the center here, it's looking like there's a slight numerical advantage to Petrick. He's got just a, full, a few more units in play. Most of them, though, are scouts. So he's got a lot of radar coverage. There's just a couple of tanks in here. So an Aurora up the top, one Aurora on that side, and a couple coming up here. But that is still more than Blodier has. Blodier actually has, well, hardly any Auroras at all, to be honest. Where are they all? He's maybe just forgotten to build them. So that means in a little assault like this, just a couple of Auroras actually may be able to do a reason a reasonable amount of damage to Bloodier if they can get in, especially if they get in somewhere like this. There's a bunch of engineers, mass extractor hydro, they could potentially cause a few problems for Bloodier. There is a single spirit rolling on here just to get a beat on what's happening. Unfortunately, it is gonna come under fire from those Auroras and last about two seconds. Which is exactly what happens. Bloodier is going to either have to reroute his ACU back up here or get something built that can deal with it. There is an emergency point defense going down. It's about 50% complete. That is building very, very fast. Obviously, Bloodier has enough in the tank. Let's just have a look. He's just about to run out now. He's very, very finely balanced, actually. Very nicely done there. He will get that completed and that will have no trouble at all dealing with the Auroras as they roll in because Petrick hasn't invested in any furthers yet so no mobile artillery to come in and take out that point defense that will force him back and you can see those Auroras just backing up. All right, Petrick on the right hand side, just another spirit just to keep an eye on things. He will be able to spot this engineer coming out. He may have any combat, uh, combat unit. No, there's not really any combat units ready to go. That is a little bit unfortunate. He probably can't do too much against that engineer. Although if it sits still, the piddly, piddly amount of damage will slowly eat away. We can see the, uh, I think, two damage from each shot. There we go. It will take a, a couple of minutes to deal with it. Unfortunately, he doesn't have a couple of minutes because there is an Aurora rolling in that will deal with the problem. All right, it looks like Petrick is opting for a very frontal heavy assault right now. He unfortunately doesn't have his units very well grouped together. They're actually going to get taken out reasonably quickly by the grouped up units from Bloodier. We've got a couple of Auroras together, a couple of Auroras together which are able to take out the single Auroras. It looks like Petrick is starting to try and pull those guys together a little bit more, but the bombers flying over here are making it a very, very difficult task indeed. Bloodier managing to keep his lead just a little bit in the eco game. 73 mass per tick to 69. He has secured all of his core mixes. The same as Petrick though. He's just done a little bit better job of grabbing these outlying mixes. We can see there's still some vacant spots around Petrick here. He just doesn't really have the number of engineers floating around that we are probably expecting that he would. These bombers are going to absolute town on this forward assault from Petrick. They are getting absolutely nowhere fast. How many bombers are in there? There's four bombers, three bombers. In any case, way more bombers than that little amount of units can possibly deal with. They are absolutely eating it alive. Petrick is going to have to back up from the center there. He does have a single static AA from that engineer in the middle. That's very nice indeed. Although three bombers to concentrated fire might actually be able to deal with that. They're going to come in and they would have actually have the added bonus if they took out this of taking out the engineer that is also causing a few threats. Unfortunately for Bodea, he's actually just flying the bombers around and around doing no damage to that anti-air turret and he's lost them all. So a little bit of a misstep there. A concentrated assault from those bombers on the AA turret probably would have netted him pretty good control 
in the centre as it stands he's going to have to go for roughly even numbers with Petrick getting his forces ready to go up here and Bladier getting ready down here still only small armies we're only talking about 10 maybe 12 auroras on each side though Bladier does actually look like he's got the advantage out on the fringes one problem he is going to run into is this point defense though he does want to bring a fervor into play to be able to deal with that effectively and on the right hand side Bladier definitely with an advantage in unit numbers but he can't really push too far forward because the ACU is sitting there ready to go it looks like Petrick is finally getting around to building the rest of the stuff around his base he probably wants to be a little bit faster at grabbing those mixes because there's another eight mass per tick which is just sitting there completely untaken right now now what is this a transport is coming in where is he putting that engineer he's actually decided he does need those outlying mixes he's going to pop an engineer down there to grab it looks like Petrick is trying to force a an assault here he is going to be slightly successful in pushing back that initial bunch of troops there for Bladir but unfortunately Bladir just got a lot more in the center if this came to an all-out fight I would have to hand the victory to Bladir because he just has a few more units in the center let's actually just have a quick look at the unit counts Bladir is sitting on 54 auroras and Petrick sitting on that's not auroras there we go 25 so we're talking about a roughly two to one differential in aurora power that is a pretty big difference a another difference though is the air power that is looking pretty solid for Petrick right now although Bloody is still sporting a few bombers still making use of them there are a lot of interceptors online and he's even switched up to tech 2 and he's starting to produce some swift wins so definitely a problem for Bladir if there is a continued lack of air power he probably needs to get T2 let's just have a look at his air factory are we seeing any T2 shifts no still just producing units I don't think he's actually going to bother switching him to T2 just yet he is actually behind pretty significantly on power we can see sitting on 1k power he's actually just going up to 1.6 so he has just finished a tech 2 power generator but still sitting on a little bit behind Petrick that tech 2 power gen is probably going to give him what he needs to get his T2 upgrade underway and start producing swift ones as well just to try and keep up Looks like Bloodier has pushed in the center a little bit. Unfortunately, he's continuing to take fire from the fervors that are mixed into Petrick's army. He has actually lost quite a few tanks as he has advanced. I don't think he's got the numbers left to be able to push through, especially given it is still too close to Petrick's production facility. So any more Auroras that Petrick produces now are just going to add to the fight and swing it more in Petrick's favor. Bloodier does kind of just need to back up a little bit right now he needs to pull back and not feed too much reclaim and t1 bombers even coming in from petrick although it looks like there wasn't a particularly great split attack done with those guys the four bombers there they could have actually really destroyed that entire forward position of bladeers but unfortunately didn't quite do so they're still wreaking havoc though and bladeer just not having the kind of air force that he needs to cope with the swift ones and tech one interceptors that <laughs> that petrick has got going all right this is not looking too flash in the center for deer right now he is well he's managed to deal with a good amount of the army but those tech one bombers they are just absolutely ripping that army apart look at them it is completely unchallenged they are just going to single pass destroy every one of those and both these guys finding themselves without much power in the center at all blood deer really needing to get his air power underway he absolutely needs to stop these T1 bombers being Aeon the Auroras will die to a single T1 bomb that is no good at all he can't have half a dozen bombers floating around the front lines just absolutely destroying his army Petrick making a decent push on the right hand side here he's actually probably outnumbering Bladir just a little bit Bladir not having what he needs to defend this position he's got a single T1 point defense up the front he's got a bit of radar coverage as well but he just doesn't have the units that he needs he's maybe able to stop this maybe just it's looking very very even right now but there are a stack more coming up the right there that is a problematic for Bladir on the right hand side what is Petrick Petrick is just continuing to pound his advantage 
with those Tech 1 bombers, the units that are pouring out of Lydia's factories are just getting absolutely destroyed as they are created. But they're just not managing to keep up with the airplane. There's even a couple of gunships as well for Petrick. Those guys are going to come in. There is <laughs> all of the, any anti air that Bloodier has right now is completely occupied with these interceptors with these bombers. That means there's free reign for these gunships to come in and do even more damage. The difference though is Bloodier has shifted up to T3, so that is why he is lacking units right now. He has opted to go all in for land. We can see a Tech 3 land factory, and he's got a couple of harbingers. If those harbingers can survive the air power, they will be able to absolutely destroy all the T1 units. But the question is, can he keep those guys alive? The shield on that harbinger just about to go down from that gunship that is going to be able to finish that harbinger off before it can do too much damage but dear just not able to get control of the skies that is going to mean that he's not going to get control of the land either unfortunately he's going to have to get a bunch of flak out just to be able to stop this from overrunning him and there's even a drop coming in from Petrick what are those are those engineers no those are auroras by the looks of it so it looks like there's going to be a small combat drop over the right hand sorry left hand side of the map unfortunately for Blood Deer, he just doesn't have anything to be able to deal with this over this side either so Petrick is just pounding him left and right he is not able to make any ground at all the air coverage is just too strong this harbinger would normally be able to do a lot of damage the shield may actually come back online again yes there we go come on yes it gets a small lease of life by getting that shield on with 200 hp it's able to finish off that tech one point defense unfortunately the shield about to go down once again and that specter is going to be able to finish off that harbinger before it actually does much damage at all there is another harbinger out here so Bladir may be able to make something work if he can get enough harbingers in enough places to be able to take out the eco take out the tech one units that Petrick has got he is going to be have to be very very careful about it though if he leaves himself too exposed he is going to lose all of his eco and speaking of eco he is well behind he is sitting on 74 mass per tick 69 so around about that sort of figure he's constantly losing eco and 162 for Petrick. Uh, Bloody just jumping up to 129. Was he on a power stall perhaps? Uh, looks like he might be jumping between power stall and not power stalling. So the accurate figure might be 123 to 162. And it changes again, of course, as I say it. He has managed to deal with the drop in here, but it did cost him a couple of mass extractors. Still really far behind in that mass game still not able to guard his borders still not able to fight Petrick in the skies Petrick intent on just <laughs> continually throwing small groups of T1 units up the center here which really is not doing a lot it's basically just turning them all into reclaim you can see just the massive amount of reclaim dotted all over the entire map now one of these guys hopefully is planning and putting a snipe that would be a very nice to see i'm just not seeing anything if anyone was it would probably be patrick because he's got the resources to do it more so than bladere has he's actually got himself up to tech three land as well continuing to produce gunships and he still has very good control of the skies in fact he's got how many five gunships there so if we do see a snipe it's probably looking like it'll be specters though perhaps bladir has learned his lesson from getting ground into the dust from the air he is now starting to produce some flak if he can get enough flak out he might be able to stop those gunships I just don't know if he is going to be able to produce enough of it. He's definitely not able to produce enough interceptors or even swift ones. Has he actually gone for T2 air? No, he hasn't. So he's still sitting on just the Tech 1 interceptors. He does manage to get a few bombers floating around though. On guard duty, they're able to do a little bit of damage. He's obviously not so badly out of air control now with those black cannons dotted around the map. He is able to use some bombers to attack any invading units. 
All right, Petrick just continuing to apply the pressure. This is absolutely relentless here. There's a couple of Harbingers rolling on in. They've taken out all those mass extractors in there. They've taken out another factory. They're continuing to just take out everything in this corner. In fact, these two Harbingers are probably enough to take out all of those Auroras if they switch focus and actually deal with it. If they continue attacking that point defense, they may not be able to survive against these Auroras. They probably will go down at this point, but it doesn't even matter because there's a stack of gunships this is looking all kinds of bad for Budir, and there's even another drop coming in. How many uh, how many Harbingers are on board there? We've got one, two Harbingers, and a bunch of Auras, and even a Fervor to boot. So that Fervor's going to start laying down some ranged damage on this Harbinger. This is absolutely no contest. Vlodir is most likely going to lose that expansion as well, and he can definitely not afford it. He's seen a 153 mass to the 200. 18 that Petrick has. Petrick is looking all over this one, and there's a couple more harbingers rolling on in. That transport is not going to get dismantled before it makes its drop. It is going to successfully get those guys away, and that means there's four harbingers here. Vladir is not even going to bother with that. I don't think that was gunships. I was not looking at the ACU at all. There was no chance at all for Blodier with that one. So we lasted 17 minutes. We saw a massive amount of air spam and we saw just how powerful the air game can be with this. Especially against Aeon because all those T1 units absolutely evaporate. All right, there we go. So we've got one more there and that is pushing Petrick right through to the next round, Bloodier is actually going to drop down into the bottom bracket and come back, maybe.